Hi folks. Well, we're coming to the end of this series on um, video editing from start to finish. Uh, second last episode, and this one I'm going to focus on exporting your video. Um, so to, to export the video, um, obviously you want to highlight your timeline. Um, and then you can go into File, Export Media, or Command-M on a Mac. That will bring up the, um, the export dialog box. So the goal of exporting is to get the highest quality of output that you can. Um, even though it's going to YouTube, I do not use any of the YouTube presets. So I won't sort of come in here and, and go down to YouTube 1080. That doesn't result in a good output. So let's start with codec. Um, I am now using um, H.265 because it actually does compress the, um, it does a better job of compression, but Sometimes I found that when I'm rendering on H.265, it seems to take just a, a really long period of time. And then in that case, I will sort of drop back to H.264, which is the slightly older codec. But generally, H.265 is what I will choose. Um, again, I ignore any of the presets that come in here and I make my own preset. So the settings for the preset is starting off with video. Um, even though we've been editing on uh, 1920 by 1080, you want to uncheck this box to say match source. What we're actually going to be doing is scaling up our output video. And so we're going to scale that up to a setting of 2676 by 1504. And the reason why we're doing that is this will force um, YouTube to use the higher quality compressor called VP9. And I did a whole um, a whole tutorial about, about this and how it works and things like that. So if you want to understand why I'm doing that, just go back into my channel and look at the GoPro tutorials. And the first one is all about um, why you actually use this setting. In a nutshell, YouTube has two different quality um, codecs and, and it always uses the higher quality one when the files are of a certain size. And below that, it's sort of hit and miss. So this will basically force YouTube to compress your video with the highest quality codec. Okay. Now there's nothing else that we're really altering down here, um, except for when we get to um, bitrate settings. So I choose um, VBR one pass, and you want to sort of just turn this up. I, I usually use anywhere between 20 and 25. I, I basically want the highest um, quality output that I can get. So put that up around about 20 or 25 as your target um, bitrate for compression. Uh, and then the rest of these stay the same. Now there's only one other thing that I do. On my effects, I'm applying a, um, an output LUT. And if I, if I, even though it says none, that's just kind of like a weird bug in Premiere, I'm actually going to my hard drive and I'm selecting something called a Q2, a QT gamma compensation curve. Now I'm gonna put a, um, I'm going to put a pointer in the top of this um, video to a video where um, where this will be explained a lot. But basically, this is the only way you can ensure that the accuracy of your color grading comes out externally. Um, and if you watch this whole video, he'll explain what you need to do there. But um, I, I checked that and that's it. So you can then come up here and you can save that preset to whatever you want there, okay? And then I run export and off it goes. So it's now gonna go off and render that. Um, so usually it is a bit slower than if I'm running to um, H.265, um, but the file is smaller and the quality is better. Um, I'm gonna cancel this just because um, I don't wanna wait. So, so that's, that's the export settings that I use. And then once I'm finished um, with a project and I'm happy and I've uploaded it to YouTube and, and I don't think I'm gonna be doing any more edits to it, the final step, I come up into file and I come down into project manager. And then this is where I can basically archive my project. So I can actually say which sequences I want to archive and I just do the ones that are, you know, the good ones. And then here, 
I can actually, uh, there's a few really handy options like exclude unused clips. So if there's big long GoPro clips that you've shot that you're not using, I will turn that on. Um, if I don't want, if I don't want to include the preview files, I can turn that off. And then I want to make sure that this is selected, which is collect files and copy to a new location. So that will pick up all of the assets that you're using and put them into a destination path, right? So th this is where I can take them off my little solid state drive and I can put them onto a slower speed hard drive um, and it will give you an estimate of, um, of how much space is required there. So in this case, this project's about 920 gigabytes. The other option that you've got here is you can actually consolidate and transcode, which will actually um, really just squish the, squish the files down a lot and it'll recode those files into a different format. So if I've shot 4K, I can now transcode them back down to, you know, um, whatever I want. So that's, um, have a play with that, but it's quite a useful way of just wrapping up.